co-governance. It's an interesting concept, one that seems pretty aloof to most people at the moment, but basically it is giving Māori a seat at the table. At least that's how it is being sold. There'll be more wider consultation on this process and this concept by the government a little later in the year. Um, but it, it all stems basically from um, Dr Peter Sharples, who was um, in government with the National Party and signed up to what's called the Indigenous... Uh, sorry, the UN Declaration on the Indigenous Peoples. And it has led to a number of debates um, in the Parliament, and we are going to talk about it this morning. Joining us uh, from the uh, National Māori Authority, Matthew Tukaki, this morning, and also the Rotorua Lakes Councillor, Tanya Tapsell. Good morning. Good morning. Morena. Morena. Great to have you both on the programme this morning. Um, I want to start with you, Tanya. The idea of co-governance, are you for or again? Um, I am for co-governance on a case-by-case -case basis locally, but when you try, say, co-governance across the entire nation as a one-fit-size-all model, that doesn't work. That doesn't work for communities, and it actually doesn't work for Māori as well, who will also potentially be amalgamated into bigger groups. So you're saying, like, the Māori Health Authority, for example, this is the most obvious example of it, you, you wouldn't create that agency, the Māori Health Authority? No, I think what it's done is strip that local voice from iwi. And, you know, if we come back to the simple treaty principles of tenoranga teratanga, self-determination, um, actually that's determination to uh, set your own goals, to look after your own issues. But what we do when we amalgamate those, we take that voice away. It's not just the iwi health authorities. We saw it earlier when the tertiary education's amalgamated, and it's also proposed in the three waters. So there's a bit of a theme there which is concerning, and from a local government perspective, when we're in the grassroots of our communities advocating for our people, that's very different because communities across New Zealand are unique and should have people sitting at that table that understand those issues of their area. Matthew, does Tanya have a point here? Because if you look at the, oh. vac the vaccine rollout, for example, you know, do we need another layer of bureaucracy, be it Māori or otherwise, in Wellington looking after things? When actually, it's, as we saw with the vaccine rollout, it's Māori um, uh, health workers, etc., on the ground who have the biggest impact? Well, look, Ryan, I, you know, I, I get what Tanya's saying. I mean, you know, she's probably going to be the, the candidate for the Tauranga by-election for the National Party and got on the speaking to that uh, that constituency of, of people in Tauranga who will vote for her and all the rest of it. But here's the thing. E we hey, do Ma Matthew, Matthew, just before you start... Can we not turn this into like a political thing? Can we All just right, okay. Can... okay, I'll be I'll be I'll behave. All right, so here's the thing. Here's the thing, right? Iwi want it, Hapu want it, the Māori Health Authority is going to be a fantastic opportunity for us to reverse um, some of the uh, horrible statistics when it comes to Māori health, whether it be cardiovascular disease, whether it be diabetes, whether it be whatever the case might be. And Tanya, you and I both know uh, that we've had co-governance and local government for a very long time. Uh, the Waikato River Authority, for example, uh, Rotorua Lakes have also co-governance in place, and it's worked incredibly successfully. What we're doing, though, Ryan, is we're entering into a debate uh, which is scraping the bottom of the barrel, a matter of convenience for the right side of politics. And what I would like to see, if everyone wants to have a debate about the future constitutional arrangements of this country, then let's do that. Let's call on a constitutional convention. But let's not use this as some sort of disguise uh, around talking about co-governance as if somehow Māori uh, are, the, are the issue as a co-pupper, because it's not. Co-governance works. It's successful. Uh, Tanya, we, we... Tanya, is that true? Is co-governance working? And if so, where are we seeing an, an, a real-life example of it working for Māori? Right, yes, so that's, yeah, it, and that you are right, Matthew. So if we, and that goes back to my point about it can work at a local level. So we have the Chadwa Lake Strategy Group, which involve our Chadwa Iwi. Uh, local and regional councils, which look after our beautiful 14 lakes uh, within the Rotorua district, and we have seen real outcomes. But we saw those outcomes because it was a co-governance arrangement based solely on those communities that they were there to advocate for. Now, if you were to take that wider to what is uh, potentially being proposed through these larger co-governance models, is those local iwi lose their voice? So when we look yeah, at our water assets, when we don't. look at our water assets, I don't think that many iwi would want somebody else representing them at the table and that's the risk. Now I've got to say though I don't want to discredit the good work Matthew. Matthew, hang on Matthew Matthew, hang on 
you've, is, you've, you've had your turn. Tanya, you can finish. You might want to hear this, Matthew. I want to acknowledge that there will be some good work that comes out of this, but the concern is, and the fundamental issue is, most people watching this don't know what co-governance means. It's a, it's a word that's been thrown around by the government without much information. So it's understandable that there are some uncertainties and some scepticism about what would that actually mean and will it deliver better outcomes. This is a really good point, Matthew, because you've actually been consulted on something that we haven't seen yet, I'm assuming, as the chair of the National Māori, Health, uh, National Māori Authority. So, mm. so the government's got this document that they've been shopping around to Māori groups like yours that we are yet to be consulted on. Can you tell us what's in it? Well, actually, no, I, I haven't been consulted on, on it either. What I'm saying, though, is co-governance is not new. Co-governance is a construct of the National Party, and it wasn't a Māori Party initiative either whether it be the Rotorua Lakes District Council, whether it be, uh, you know, uh, the Maung Authority there in Tamaki in Auckland, whether it be whatever it might is, uh, you know, might be. We've been going down this path for many years and it works successfully. We have managed to uh, successfully look after our natural resources and so on and so forth for years now. So I, th this is why I get really worried about it. Yeah, this is not new. It, it's it's sort of like um, a confected argument in order to, um, you know, uh, play to the the bottom of the barrel of politics. And I know you don't want to bring politics into it, but this is what it is. It's like putting something on the tab, right? Putting something on the tab and hoping somebody else is going to come and pay the bill. This is absolute ha. <laughs> All right, we'll leave it there on the ha. Um, thanks so much for your time this morning, guys. We appreciate it. The Rotorua Lakes Councillor Tanya Tapsell and be, Chair of the National Māori Authority, Matthew Tukaki, as well. Actually, Tanya, are you, are you going to run, now that we're done with that discussion, are you going <laughs> to run for the National Party? Is that true? I, I have been very humbled how many times my name has been suggested, but I'll be honest with you, I'm a Rotorua Lakes Councillor based on Rotorua. Um, so there will be a selection process. I wish them all the best, but it won't be me.